means is that the um, diabetes, they tell you, is a chronic disease. So this is what happens, and this is what happens in all studies. And if you've taken medications, you know this is what happens. So your sugars start out actually not bad. As you take the medications, the sugars actually comes down a bit. But over the years, it kind of, the effect sort of wears off. So then you wind up having to add more and more and more medications. So what happens is that no matter what drug you take, so th these compare three drugs, metformin, glybride, and rosiglitazone. So ma no matter what drug you take, the initial effect is very good, up to about six months. And then after about six months, the effect kind of wears off. And you can see that the sugar slowly goes up. And so what happens is that you wind up on a second medication or a third medication. And this is pretty well what happens to everybody. So if you've taken, if you've had diabetes for a while, and many people have had it for 10, you know, 12, 15 years, what you find is that you start off on metformin, then you go to metformin and glybride, then maybe three agents or four agents, then you wind up on a little bit of insulin, then you wind up on more insulin and more insulin. And if you think about the diabetes, if you think about who has, um, you know, mild diabetes and who has severe diabetes, you can see that the people who are just on the little bit of metformin are, you know, have mild diabetes and if you're on a lot of insulin, you have very severe diabetes. So in fact, over these years, despite what everybody tells you, your diabetes is just getting worse and worse and worse. So your sugars might go up, they might go down, but your diabetes is actually getting worse. And I think that's what confuses people a lot because they think that the sugar and the diabetes are the same thing, but they're actually not. But over the, that period of time, you can see that no matter what, it's actually progressing. And they say it's a progressive disease. So this is the thing that you have to understand, that the, the, the sugars and the diabetes are actually two different things. So diabetes, the real heart of diabetes is the insulin resistance, okay? So that part is what's getting worse. The sugars is really just a symptom of the insulin resistance, okay? But it's not the actual diabetes. The actual diabetes is the resistance to insulin and the subsequent very high levels of insulin. If you want to think about it, you know, in an um, analogy, you can think about an infection. So if you have an infection, so you have a big, you know, infection in the lungs or whatever, that's the actual disease. The symptom is the fever, okay? So what you have to do is treat the disease, which is the infection, with antibiotics. You can't treat the symptom of the fever. So if you have a very bad infection, you need antibiotics. You don't need more and more Tylenol. So diabetes is the same thing. The disease is about insulin resistance. But the symptom is the high blood sugar. And yet all our treatment is directed against the high blood sugar. So you can see that controlling the high blood sugars actually doesn't do anything for you because you're not actually treating the disease. The disease actually continues to progress. And that's the real problem. So up to about five years ago, we thought that treating the sugars would make you better, right? And this is what probably all of you have heard. Your sugars are doing fine. Your sugars are doing fine. So if you... Um, think that, that's, that the, the sugars is the same thing as the diabetes, then you'd think that the diabetes is doing fine. But it turns out about five years ago that they did three very large studies. And what they found was that no matter if your sugars were well controlled or poorly controlled, it actually didn't make any difference. You still got complications of diabetes, you still got the disease, you know, the, the heart disease, the strokes, you got the, you know, the eye disease, the kidney disease, all of it. So none of that was made better by controlling the sugars. And if you think about it this way, you can see why. Because you're not actually treating the disease. You're only treating the symptoms. So just like if you take Tylenol for a, a, an infection, it might make you look better, but it doesn't actually make you better. So this is the same thing. So the, 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 the diabetes is the insulin resistance. So you have to understand what is the cause of the insulin resistance, and then you actually have to treat it. So you have to treat the insulin resistance and not the sugars. Now, at a certain point when your sugars are very high, yes, you have to treat it. But that's not what is really important in the disease. The real part of the heart of the disease is the insulin resistance. And because they don't really understand what causes the insulin resistance, they can't actually treat it. So all your treatments, all the metformin, all the glybride, all the uh, insulin, all of that is aimed at simply treating the, sh the sugars. 
So here's the real question. What causes the insulin resistance? And this is what is happening in the body. This is just a cartoon. So normally the insulin causes you to lower the blood sugars. That's what it does. As you eat, you know, your blood sugars go up and insulin is released to take that sugar out of the blood and into the tissues. And that's a normal thing. Uh, when you develop insulin resistance, it's the, the insulin doesn't seem to work as well. So what happens is that the body kind of pumps up the levels of insulin to make it work well enough to get your sugars out of the way. But the high insulin level is a result of the insulin resistance. But what causes the insulin resistance in the first place? And that's really what you need to understand in order to treat it. Because if you know what causes the insulin resistance, then you can treat it. And it turns out that it's actually the insulin that causes the insulin resistance. And that might seem funny at first, but in fact, that's what happens in most biological systems. So if you um, look at any other hormone, if you get exposed to it, your body develops resistance to it. So if you look at addictive drugs or alcohol or anything or smoking or anything, as you take the first one, say for instance marijuana or cocaine or one of these addictive drugs, or you can take Valium or any of these anti-psychotics um, anti, uh, and stuff. As you take the first one, you get a real high, but every subsequent one is a little bit lower. So you wind up having to take higher and higher doses to get the same effect. And that's really resistance or tolerance, and it happens for all drugs. Insulin is exactly the same. As you take more and more insulin, your body develops more and more resistance to it. And now you see that it's actually a, a real vicious cycle because what happens is that if your insulin level is high, then it, you get some insulin resistance. As you get insulin resistance, you get higher insulin levels. As you get higher insulin levels, you get higher resistance, and it goes round and round. So you have a vicious circle. And in fact, treatment with insulin now is not simply not effective. It's actually making things worse because you're feeding into that cycle. So while the insulin lowers your sugars, it is actually raising your insulin resistance. So in fact, it's making things worse. You're getting more diabetes by taking the insulin. And that's the real problem. When you understand the actual disease, you can see why current standard treatment is actually not only not effective, it's actually really, really, really bad for you. Because you're treating the exact uh, the, the, what is actually causing the disease is what you're treating it with. That's never going to work, right? It's just not going to work. So if you think about it, the, the problem is that the insulin level is too high. So you're not going to make things better by taking more insulin. It's like treating an alcoholic with alcohol, right? This is exactly the same thing. So the sa same thing happens in alcohol. If you take alcohol, the first one you get you know, a real buzz, and then every subsequent one is a little lower. And what happens is that if you take the alcohol, your symptom, you feel a little bit better. But you're not making the alcoholism any better, right? This is the exact same thing. The problem is that your insulin levels are too high. So how can taking more insulin possibly be good for you? And the truth is that it wasn't. It was never good for you. In fact, it made things worse. But people didn't really understand that. And because they didn't understand that, they then made an excuse for themselves by saying that this is a chronic progressive disease. But the truth is that diabetes was not a chronic progressive disease because we know that we can cure it in many cases. So if you do weight loss surgery or gastric banding or bariatric surgery, basically if you staple somebody's stomach, their diabetes goes away in like 90% of cases. So this was not a chronic progressive disease. This is a curable disease. So if you say that this is a curable disease, yet our treatment is making people worse, the only logical conclusion is that our treatment is completely incorrect. And that's exactly what it is. So when you're thinking about treatment of diabetes, there's a few things you have to consider. One, you have to understand that the key to treating diabetes is not to take more insulin. That makes things worse. The key is how are you going to get those insulin levels really low? The second thing is that diabetes is a dietary disease. Okay, Almost for sure it's a dietary disease. We know that. Um, yet 
if it's a dietary disease, the cure is going to have to be dietary. You can't take a dietary disease and treat it with drugs and pretend that that's going to make things better. But yet that's what we've done. We've taken a disease which is dietary in nature and we've prescribed you drugs that suppress the symptoms. It's not going to make it better and it hasn't. The last 30 years has borne it out. The third thing is that this is not a chronic progressive disease at all. This is in fact a curable disease but you have to treat it the right way. You have to understand what you're doing. So one of the things we do in our clinic is that we are looking at ways of how to lower the insulin levels and that's the real thing and one of the simpler ways to do it is intermittent fasting and that's that's what that's why we have a lot of people on these sort of protocols and one of the things to remember is that fasting um, has been done for many many years you know everybody thinks that it's so crazy everybody hears a, about it at first and think it's crazy but you have to remember that fasting has been done for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and not only that but almost every single major religion in the world has periods of fasting that are prescribed not because you know of any particular reason but they recognize that it is actually a very healthy thing for people to be doing every so often and why is it so healthy because what happens is that when you fast your insulin levels go down very low because you're not eating your insulin levels go down and having periods where your insulin level is down helps prevent that vicious cycle, right? It's the insulin that leads to the resistance, which leads to higher insulin. It's a vicious cycle. So if every once in a while, you know, you, you, you do Ramadan, which is a month of fasting, or you do, you know, the 40 days of Lent, or whatever it is you do, if you have a period now where your insulin level is very low, you're going to completely break that vicious cycle. And if you do that routinely through the year, then you will stay healthy. You will prevent the development of that resistance. If you don't get the resistance, you don't get the high levels. And that's what we do. So I'm, I'm going to show you here what, um, what we do kind of in a uh, demonstration. So what we do in terms of the sugars, you can think about it this way. The body actually has the ability to store energy in two ways. So when you eat, you're taking in energy as food. Right? So you can store that in two ways. You can store sugar and you can store fat. Okay? So sugar is stored in the liver as something called glycogen. And there is a really a limited amount of glycogen that you can store in the liver. But it's readily available. Okay? So it's kind of like a short term uh, storage. But you can store sugar. If you store more energy than fat, the body will actually turn that into fat. And that's kind of long term food energy storage. Right? So as long as you're eating, you're going to be burning that off. Um, you're going to be increasing insulin and insulin is going to tell your body to store some of that away. Okay? So if you have too much sugar, what happens is that some of that is going to go into the stores. But as long as your stores are not full, it's not going to spill over into the blood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it this so way. Normally so as you take a little thing to eat, if you don't have filled up stores of sugar, What's going to happen is that you're going to fill it up a little bit, right? But it's fine. As you don't eat, so for instance, you eat dinner, you take in more calories than you can really use for that period of time. So your body produces insulin, and insulin says to the body, okay, well, I'm, I've eaten a big meal. I'll use a little bit of that as energy. The rest I'm going to put in storage as sugar, okay, because that's what I do. So it fills up the storage, but the storage is empty, so it's fine. Then you go to sleep, so for the next, you know, 9, 12 hours, you're not eating. So what happens is that your body is going to take that and it's going to burn it off as energy. So that's fine. That's the normal situation. Now what happens in the uh, diabetic situation is something like this. So over time, your, your storage is, you know, empty. But over time, as you kind of continue to eat more and more, what happens is that that storage kind of gets filled up. And now here's the situation in diabetes. This is your storage levels of sugar, right? They're completely full, right? And what you do when you eat is this. You're going to take in a meal, 
and you're going to have more sugar. And what's going to happen? It's all going to spill over into the blood, right? So the blood sugar levels go up. There's nothing it can do. It can't store any more. So for a while, your body can compensate. But what does insulin do? So now you're diabetic, and this is what happens every mealtime. Your storage is filled up. Every time you eat, the sugar spills out into the blood. Well, as you take insulin to take care of that problem, the body is going to take that excess sugar and force it back into the body. So what happens to that? Your body is just going to store it as fat. In other words, the insulin is going to make you gain weight. And if you've ever taken insulin, you know already that's exactly what happens. But this is the problem. If you continue to do this day after day, year after year, all you do is gain weight, right? But it doesn't make you any better because all that sugar is still in your body. So it's kind of like that show Hoarders. I don't know if you've seen it, but people, you know, hoard too much stuff and their house is full of stuff. So pretty soon the stuff fill, flows out. And what happens? If you're taking insulin, all you're doing is taking all that garbage and shoving it back into the house. Well, that's not going to help. That's not going to make things better. In fact, over time, it's just going to make things worse. And that's exactly what happens in the current treatment of diabetes. So this is what we do instead. If your cup is completely full, the only rational treatment for diabetes, so this is the situation now in diabetes, your cup is completely full. The only way that's going to make you better is to start draining it off. So that's what you do. So as you fast, what happens? A little bit of this water is going to come out and it's going to get burned off. The next time you fast, a little bit more of this water is going to come and it's going to get drained off. Every single time you do it. So when you eat, it will fill back up a little bit, right? But as you go, what's going to happen is eventually your stores are going to come down and it won't be, it won't spill over into the blood. You're basically just forcing the body to burn off that sugar. But as you do, you reduce the stores of sugar and you get better. Your diabetes gets better because now you're burning it off. It's like that guy in Hoarders. Instead of shoving it back into your house, which is what the insulin does, we're just going to throw it out. And really, that's really the, 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 the reason that we do this. You have to, so you have to lower insulin levels, but you've got to get rid of that sugar. Okay? You've stored up too much. And it hasn't been stored up over like a month. It's been stored up over like 10 years, right? So the thing is that it's not going to reverse in a, a week or a month or two months even. Yes, if you do fasting every day, it will reverse faster, right? Because you're getting rid of that sugar every day. So this is what we do. And um, the, you know, a few, a few patients actually have been uh, kind enough to share their stories with us. But I'll present a few other cases because we've, we've had, you know, quite a number of people go through the program. So I'll, I'll, I'll just share their stories with you quickly um, because really it illustrates really how powerful this, uh, this new concept is. Um, so the first case we have is Richard, who's uh, here today. And so he's had diabetes for about 10 years now and he's had a few complications including some kidney disease which is why he was here in this office. And um, he saw a colleague of mine, Dr. Ting, and uh, so he was referred into the intensive dietary management program. And we started him in June of 2013. And we started him with a fasting regimen uh, as opposed to the amount of insulin that he had. So this is Richard and his wife. Oh, I can't see that very well. Um, and this is what's happened to his weight. So his weight, starting just above 250, has been steadily coming down and it's down to 210. His waist size has continued to come down and his hemoglobin A1c, which is the measure of his sugars, has, has stayed relatively stable, below 7%. And this is him now. So if you look at what has happened to his insulin dose, so he started off with 55 units of insulin and within, you know, six weeks he was off of all his insulin. In other words, he, his sugars are doing fine, and he's off of all his medications. 
completely. And his, you know, his, his levels of A1C are no longer at a level where you could make this case that he is diabetic. In other words, you could say that his diabetes has been cured. By using these kind of simple uh, understanding of diabetes, you can see that this is actually the rational, but also the natural way to cure diabetes. We're not talking about piling on more drugs for you. I mean, you go to some of these places, they'll tell you to take these experimental drugs and they'll want you to sign you up for drug trials. No. What we're doing has been done for thousands of years and is in fact exactly the way they used to treat diabetes. But they understood that it was a dietary disease. It has to be treated with dietary measures. Uh, this is the second case, Balraj, who's here this, uh, this morning as well. So he was diagnosed in 2003 with diabetes, and he also had some complications of that. And so, you know, after treating him incorrectly for many years, I uh, started him on the intensive dietary management program because, you know, back then I didn't understand much of this myself. Much of this is new. So he started in August, and so his weight has come down a bit. But you know, he started at 186 and he's come down, you know, 8, 10 pounds or, some, uh, or so. His waist has come down, but you can see his sugars, his hemoglobin A1C has stayed uh, very good. And this is his, his, his medications. So again, starting at over 40 units, about 40 units a day of insulin. So this is what he had to take. Within five, seven weeks, he was down to zero. He is no longer taking insulin. He's no longer taking any medications for his uh, diabetes. Which again, you could say, if your sugars are good and you're no longer on any medications, you could say that your diabetes has been cured. In essence, what we're doing is exactly the same thing we do with the stomach stapling surgery. So the stomach stapling surgery, the cure rates for diabetes are like 90%. But the benefits are because of the fasting they cut your stomach so you can't eat. In other words, you're fasting. But if all the benefits come from fasting, why do the surgery at all? It doesn't even make sense. Just do the fasting. Um, this is another case. He's not here, but it's a 45-year-old Filipino man, and he was just recently diagnosed with diabetes. He started with a hemoglobin A1C of 8.7%. So anything over 6.5% is considered diabetes. Anything over 7% is diabetes, but he was newly diagnosed and he really didn't want to start any medications. So I said to him, well, if you don't want to start medications, then come into my program and we'll treat you. And we'll treat you and therefore you won't have to take medications. So it had been slowly rising over the last six months and what happened was that he started in June. His weight, again, came down. It came down about three kilos. But his A1C continuously came down. So you can see that his final A1C at the end of 10, 12 weeks was 6.3%. So again, at a level that you wouldn't be able to say that he has diabetes. So in other words, this fellow, instead of taking medication and then later taking more medication, then more medication, then more medication, we're able to treat him right off the bat with a dietary regimen and he's been able not to take any medications. In essence, his diabetes has been cured. So again, lots of cases. Another fellow, a uh, 66-year-old Chinese man, much the same story. Type 2 diabetes, which was recently diagnosed in 2012. And you can see that his sugars were really high. His A1C was 10.5%. Um, I told him to try different things, but, uh, by, but I just saw him actually in September of uh, 2013, and his A1C was still 9.4%. And he, couldn't, he, he, he didn't have a drug plan, so he really didn't want to take any medication. So I said, well, if you don't want to take medications, come into the program. And that should say September 2013. So we started him a few months ago, and this is what's happened. So as he's following the program, his sugars are coming down. Exactly what we would expect. And as you follow the program longer, you're burning off those stores of sugar and your hemoglobin A1C is coming down. So he went from 9.4 to 8.4, and I just saw him at 7.3. So again, all without medications, and I'm hoping that he will never have to take medications. Um, another case, Desmond, uh, he had some heart problems. He also had diabetes, and he's here this morning as well uh, to share his story. Um, he also had a bit of complications, the heart disease, the neuropathy. And this is what we did, a again, 
he, with, with diabetes, it causes all kinds of problems, right? So you get heart problems, you get kidney problems, you get eye problems, all kinds of problems. And the thing about it is that there's nothing we can do about those kidney problems or those eye problems because it's the diabetes which is killing the, 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 the kidneys, the heart, and all that sort of thing. If you don't do anything about the diabetes, you can't do anything about the kidneys or the eyes or anything else because the root of the problem is the diabetes. So you have to take care of the diabetes. And the way that we had been treating him was making the diabetes worse and worse. So we started him on the program. And again, his weight has been slowly coming down, uh, as you might expect. His waist size has come down. And his sugars actually have stayed very, very good. But if you look at his uh, doses of insulin now, again, starting at about 25 units a day, we're able to bring him down. And now he's no longer on any insulin. We switched them instead to one of the pills, which is, you know, for many reasons, is much better. It's safer, it's much less, uh, you know, you don't have to poke yourself all the time, you don't have to check your sugars all the time, but really he's been able to come down of all those medications. If your medications are coming down, you're coming off of the insulin, you're going on to pills instead, it means your diabetes is getting better, right? Before, every single year your diabetes was getting worse. And now, for the first time, we see everybody's diabetes getting better. It's reversing because instead of having higher insulin levels leading to higher resistance, now we have lower insulin levels lowering, low, uh, leading to less resistance. So you're actually driving that cycle now in reverse. And that's why it's uh, working so well. And that's, that's just a recent picture of him now. A uh, couple more cases. So Frank, who couldn't be here, we asked him to be here, and he said that he, th um, uh, I think he was away, so he couldn't come, but he did want to come. He also had diabetes and kidney disease, and uh, he actually didn't really want to start. He calls himself a grumpy old goat because he, because <laughs> he, he didn't really want to start. He didn't think it was great, but I kind of talked him into it. I said, you know, you really should try it because it's there's nothing to lose by trying it. If you don't like it, then you don't do it. Um, but we were able to start him on the program, and you can see here again, his weight is coming down nicely, his waist size is coming down, his sugars are improving almost every single time, and if you look at his doses of medication again, he started on 45 units a day of insulin. By the time we, we finished with him, he's just on, he's on no insulin, and he's just taking a pill. So again, you can see that his diabetes is getting better. His sugars might go up and down. So the, diabetes, the, the sugars actually get better as you treat the disease. Just like if you treat with antibiotics, your fever goes away because your disease is getting better. You don't have to treat with Tylenol because if you get rid of the infection, the, disease, the, the, the symptoms go away. It's the same with the diabetes. As you treat the diabetes, the high sugars goes away because the high sugars was just the symptom. You can't <coughs> treat the symptoms and expect the disease to get better. But as you treat the disease, the symptoms get better. So everyone here, their sugars are coming down. We're not treating the sugars particularly. We're treating the disease. Another fellow who is here, I follow for high blood pressure. And I've seen him for quite some time, actually. Um, and he, um, he was also diagnosed with type 2 diabetes as far back at least as 2004. He'd been on insulin since 2007. And he, his main problem was actually high blood pressure. But I said, well, you know, high blood pressure uh, goes along with the whole metabolic syndrome. So, in fact, the diabetes and the weight and the hypertension and the high cholesterol, they're actually all caused by the high insulin levels. So I said, well, with this high, high blood pressure, we need to do something. So I said, well, we need to get you into the program because... Uh, he was on probably eight different medications for high blood pressure, and uh, his pressure was still like 200, right? So we put him in the program, and what happened to him, his insulin levels, his insulin dose went from 70 units a day to, right now, zero. He's just on some pills. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. His blood pressure is getting better. His blood sugars, again, they go up and down. We can see that they're all within the normal range. But we went from 70 units of insulin a day to zero in less than three months. So five years of insulin that he'd been taking every single day. Not getting better, getting worse. Over time, it just gets worse. But now it's starting to reverse, finally. And another fellow um, uh, who, who isn't able to come, 
but we call Mr. Yes. Um, he, uh, much the same story. He had been on uh, insulin for many, many years. And as everybody here, he started with a medication, then he took more medications, then he took insulin, then he took more insulin. By the time they were done with him, he was on 140 units of insulin a day. And that's not even that unusual. We, I see lots of people with that kind of high dose. So as we got him into the program, his waist size was coming down, his weight is coming down, his sugars are getting better, and he's not completely off insulin, but he's down to um, about 30, 40 units a day. So from 140 down to about 30 or 40. So significant improvement. I mean, because he started so high, it's going to take a little bit longer. But again, you can see that as you continue to do it, it gets better. And this is Robert. He's also uh, here this morning, but he, he, he's done extremely well again. So uh, the, the same story, Di type 2 diabetes, treated with uh, medications and more medications and more medications. Finally, they put him on insulin. And then I recently saw him and I said, whoa, insulin, now this is not good news, right? So I said, forget that. We need to get you into the program. We need to get you uh, treated correctly because if you're not treated correctly, I've seen this movie before, it goes insulin, more insulin, more insulin, more insulin. In fact, his insulin dose went very quickly up to close to 40 units a day. Um, so as we, as we got him started, his weight started to come down, his waist size came down, his sugars got better. And look, within three weeks, he was off of all his insulin and just taking medications. Now we're working on getting rid of the rest of his medications. So that is the power of being able to treat it correctly. And these are not isolated cases. We actually see responses uh, in you know, the majority of patients because we're doing the things the right way. If you do it the wrong way, you'll never get any benefit from it. And that's what we've been doing all along. So the key here really is to lower insulin levels. And there's more than one way to do it. We use intermittent fasting because it's a very simple way to do it. But there's actually a number of ways to reduce insulin because that's really the key. Um, the insulin is what causes the diabetes. What's interesting also is that the insulin causes obesity. And that's why they go together because they have a, the same cause. They're both caused by the same thing. So whether you're here for weight loss or whether you're here for diabetes, they're both caused by the same thing. They're diseases of too much insulin. And if you understand that they're diseases of too much insulin, now you can say, that's good to know because now I need to know how we're going to reduce the insulin levels. That's the key. So intermittent fasting is one way. Uh, the second way is to reduce your dietary refined carbohydrates. So carbohydrates tend to raise the insulin levels very high, and therefore they're, they're something that you should uh, reduce. There are also several protective factors. So there are factors that protect against the ra rising insulin. And one of those is a high-fat diet which is very interesting because for many years you've probably heard that you should eat a low-fat diet. And what I'm saying is actually that wasn't good for you at all because the fat actually helps protect you by keeping those insulin levels down. Fiber does much the same thing, so high-fiber diets also help protect against the rise in insulin. Vinegar, so many traditional foods are very high in vinegar, pickled foods and that sort of thing. Um, are protective and certain spices may also benefit so cinnamon and turmeric and certain other spices may also have a role in protecting so some people take other extracts like bitter melon juice and that's the same sort of thing there are probably uh, natural compounds which also help protect against the rising insulin but the key is whatever way you do it it's all done in the same manner it's to reduce insulin levels so you can do it with fasting or you can do it with these uh, very low carbohydrate diets. Now the one question that everybody always asks about the high fat diet is that isn't that going to clog up my arteries? And that's what we've taught you about. Oh, before I forget this. So this is the hormonal obesity theory, which is what it's all based on, which again, the real key is the insulin levels. So insulin levels, these are protective factors, protective factors but it's all to do with this vicious cycle between insulin and insulin resistance. Fructose, carbohydrates, wheat, they all play into the high insulin uh, diet that we all eat. And that's one of the reasons that 
we're getting the obesity crisis, the diabetes crisis is because we have a very high insulin sort of a diet. Processing is what's really bad because it strips out the fat and strips out the fiber. So you're taking out these major protective factors and therefore you're leading to increased insulin levels. And that's what we have to combat. Uh, the insulin leads not only to the weight and the diabetes, but also a whole list of things, which then leads to the, the heart disease, the cancer, and all these other things. So it